When you look at spaceships in science fiction, you very rarely see rockets taking off from a launch pad. Instead, you see ships simply launching from the ground and flying straight into outer space. Well, in the near future, this may actually be possible because the time of the space plane has just arrived. <laughs> space planes, probably the first thing that comes to mind is the space shuttle. Because after all, it flew in space, and it was capable of landing on a runway much like a plane, so the name does seem to fit naturally. But the problem is that the space shuttle was just nowhere near reusable. It was basically a glorified glider strapped to a disposable rocket system, which meant that it cost a whopping $1.5 billion for every single launch. More recently, there's been a number of new entries such as Virgin Galactic, Spaceship 2, and x Corps Lynx, which will offer suborbital space flights to paying customers. Virgin's flights will cost $250,000 initially, whilst x Corps will cost $100,000. And potentially the first real commercial flight operations could begin by the end of this year. But I mean, that does sound like a lot of money though. But when you compare it to the $20 million that Dennis Tito paid to become the very first space tourist, then it becomes clear that space planes hold the potential to dramatically reduce the cost of access to space. But these are still a long way off achieving the dream of a fully reusable, single-stage-to-orbit space plane. A little like this. Say hello to Skylon, a British concept for a fully reusable, single-stage-to-orbit space plane. 83 metres across, 25 metres wide, capable of travelling at over five times the speed of sound, delivering a 15-tonne payload to orbit, before returning, landing on the runway, and being ready to return to space within two days. To find out more, I visited Reaction Engines in South Oxfordshire, where the Sabre engines that allow Skyline to fly are currently being developed. Okay, I'm here with Jeremy Nicholas from Reaction Engines. So can you tell us a little bit about Skyline and what it means for the future of space flight? Sure, so Skyline represents a fully reusable space access system. Um, to that end, we want to reduce the cost of space access while making it more reliable and a, a more responsive solution uh, to our satellite launching needs. So Skylon's basically designed to operate just like an aeroplane. It takes off from a runway, it ascends, um, the only difference being that it, it breathes air up to a certain point and then switches to liquid oxygen, which makes it a rocket. Once Skylon's operational uh, and we've got regular, cheap, reliable access to space, um, it means we can create things like infrastructure that are just too expensive um, to maintain or even get up there in the first place at the minute. And once we've got that, we can uh, send large emissions off around the solar system. We can send uh, many more humans into orbit and beyond. Into Mars, even. <laughs> on, yeah, all the way onto Mars. This is made possible by a new engine technology involving a heat exchanger which supercools intake gas from 1000 degrees Celsius to minus 150 degrees Celsius in less than one hundredth of a second. Some people are calling it the greatest breakthrough in propulsion since the jet engine. Reaction engines are now in stage three of their development program, having proven that, that the technology works to the European Space Agency, and having recently received large investments both from the UK government and from various private investors, they are now working on a full-scale prototype engine which should be completed by around 2019. This will then move on to a full-scale commercialisation of Skylon by around 2024. This would revolutionise access to space, dropping launch costs from $25,000 per kilogram to $1,000 per kilogram. And this opens up a whole manner of interesting avenues to explore. For instance, reaction engines have studied how a return mission to Mars will be made possible using Skylon launchers. It's called Project Troy, and I'll post a link below to the detailed full document if you're interested. But the upshot is that 18 humans would spend 14 months exploring Mars. They would have access to 90% of the surface for a combination of surface and aerial vehicles. And then they would return back to Earth. In total, this would require 522 Skylon launchers, lifting some 5,000 tonnes of material into Earth orbit, and would cost somewhere between 70 and $100 billion. And admittedly, that's quite expensive, over 10 times the cost of Mars 1's one-way mission. But if you try to accomplish a similar return mission using conventional rockets, you'd be looking at something in the ballpark area of $2 trillion. So 
Clearly, Skylon can dramatically cut the cost of access to space. Space planes like Skylon hold the potential to dramatically reduce launch costs, enabling fuel depots and construction yards to be assembled in low Earth orbit. And once this infrastructure is in place, it will accelerate our expansion out into the solar system, enabling large-scale colonization of Mars, asteroid mining and deep space exploration. Next time, I'll be taking a look at reusable rocketry, with a special focus on SpaceX. See you then.